Professor Ad here, and today we're going to take our addition process that we've been working with and see what happens when it gets real complicated. So uh, let's just dig right in and explore with an example to start out. So the first example I have is 56 plus 28. So using the method that we've been using in the last couple of videos, I can start out by writing 56 as 50 plus 6. And I can write 28 as 20 plus 8. And then I can go ahead and add the numbers that are similar. So I can add the tens. So 50 plus 20, I can do 5 plus 2, which will give me 5, 6, 7. So that'll give me 70. And then 6 plus 8. So I'm going to do 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I end up with... 14. So what's different about this uh, example from the examples we've worked on in the past is that uh, the 70 part's not different. That's like what we would get before. But now what's different is we got a two-digit number when we added our one-digit numbers. So when we added six and eight together, we ended up getting a two-digit answer of 14. So this is something that's different. So now we get kind of like a I think of it as like a chain reaction when something like this happens. So when this happens, basically we're just going to pretend like we started with this problem and go from there. So I can rewrite 70 as 70, and then I can rewrite 14 as 10 plus 4. So basically splitting up 14 into its 10s and its 1s. And now I can add the tens together again. So 70 plus 10 is gonna give me 80. And then 80 plus four is 84. So that's an example of a chain reaction happening in the addition process. Now, I worked this all out with numbers, but we also saw some ways we could express this using pictures where we used like circles for the ones place and, or sorry, circles for the tens place and dots for the ones place. So let's see what that would look like if we would work this out. So we would have um, for 56, we would have five circles and then six dots. And then for 28, we would have two circles and then eight dots. Seven, eight. And then to add them all up, we count up how many total circles there are and how many total dots. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total circles. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 dots. And this is where our old method would break down. Our answer is not going to be 714. Okay? And that's because this 14 sort of is spilling into some extra places. So here's what we can do to adjust that. So when I draw this picture, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles. So that's less than 10, that's good. If I have, uh, let me count the, the dots, and when I get to 10, I'm gonna make a, take a pause. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So when I have 10 of the same shape, it turns into the next shape. So since my circles represent tens, if I have 10 dots, those 10 dots are going to get turned into a circle. And then these one, two, three, four dots remain. So once I do that, let me cross these out because these have turned into the circle because there were 10 of them. And now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight circles. And one, two, three, four dots. So we end up getting this 84 the same way. Really what's going on visually here is these 10 turning into a circle is us breaking this 10 of 14 away and leaving the four dots. So that's the connection between what's going on sort of notationally or numerically here with what's happening in the picture. 
So let's work through another example um, in a similar way. We'll work through it. This next example, we'll work through with pictures first, and then we'll work through with the numbers and see which way might make a little bit more sense to us. Alrighty, so for this next example, we have 453 plus 789. So I'm gonna continue to use dots for the ones place and circles for the tens place. And I forget what I used actually for the hundreds place last time. So I'm gonna use a square this time. I think that's what I used last time, but really it doesn't matter just as long as you're being consistent within the problem. So I'm gonna represent 453 by writing four squares. And then for 50, I'm gonna write five circles. And then for the three, I'm gonna write three dots. So this is my 453. Now, instead of writing them side by side, since I now know that sometimes I might wanna group things together, I'm gonna to use another color to represent 789. So I'm gonna use green to represent 789. And I'm gonna basically like line up the shapes in the same places. So for example, with 789, I need seven boxes. So I'm gonna add those seven boxes down here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I need eight circles. So I'm gonna put them in the circle column. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I need nine dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this way I'm kind of grouping together um, the like shapes so that if I have 10 of any one shape, I can easily kind of box them together, cross it out and create the next shape. When I do this, I'm gonna start with the smallest shape first. So I'm gonna start out with the dots. And if I count up to 10 dots, they get X'd out and I'm gonna add in a circle. So let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Sure we do. Okay, so we have 10 dots. We're gonna X those out and they turn into a circle since a circle represents 10. And then I just have two dots left over. And actually, I'm gonna put the circle in the circle column here. Okay, now I'm gonna count up the circles because we have a lot of circles here. Same thing, if I get to 10 circles, they get x out and I'm gonna add in another box because the box is the next shape. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 circles. So I'm gonna box those in and I'm gonna add in a square. And then I have one, two, three, four. So you can also think of this like if you have money and you have like 10 dimes, you could exchange those 10 dimes for a dollar bill. That's what we're doing. We exchanged um, 10 dimes here for a circle dollar, and then we exchanged 10 circle dimes for a square dollar. And then we'll do that with the squares. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh golly. 10 squares. And now we have this unique situation where we didn't have any other shape. So I think I was using stars for the thousands place before. So I'm out of space. I'm gonna put a star here for the thousands. So these 10 squares, it's like 10 square dimes. I'm now gonna exchange for my next symbol up. And then I have two squares left. So at the end of this, I wound up with one star, two squares left over, one, two, three, four circles left over, and one, two dots left over. So we end up with 453 plus 789 is gonna give us 1,242. Yeah, so the pictures are kind of weird. Let's go along with the numbers, which are also admittedly kind of weird, but let's see how they work out too. So if pictures aren't my jam, I'm gonna rewrite this um, using the different place values. So I can write 453 as 400 
plus 50 plus 3, right? 453. And then I can write 789 as 700 plus 80 plus 9. Now I'm going to add together the like things. So 400 and 700, I'm going to do uh, add 4 and 7. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That gives me 1,100. Then we have 50 plus 80. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's going to give me 13t. Weird. And then I have 3 and 9. So 9, 10, 11, 12. So notice when I added like the hundreds, the 400 and the 700, I did 4 plus 7, which is 11. And then because those were hundreds, I had the two zeros here, so 1100. Similarly with the 50 and the 80, I did five plus eight and got 13. And then since the T's have just one zero, I just had one zero after it. So the number of zeros is gonna stay like pretty much the same when you add them up like that. Um, and then the ones are just gonna be like normal. So now that I'm here, I can see that all of these have multiple digits. So I'm gonna treat this like my brand new question and split each of these numbers up. So for example, 1,100 is the same as 1,000 plus 100. 130 is the same as 100 plus 30. And 12 is the same as 10 plus two. So I'm splitting up 12 in this way. Now I can go ahead and add the like things like I did before. So we only have one that involves thousands. Right? No one else here has a thousands place. So we'll get 1,000. I have 100 plus 100, which is 200. 30 and 10. So 3 plus 1 is 4. So that'll give me 40. And then we have just a single one uh, of two. So we've got just twos that are in the ones place. Now that I've done that, I'm going to add all of these together. So I end up with 1,240. Oh, I put another comma there. 42. Which, hooray, is the same answer we got with the picture. So if you do two different methods and you get the same answer. It's really nice. So we end up with 1,242. Now you're going to know if there's going to be a chain reaction or not, because after you kind of combine your things, notice how here, how we had two digits that were not zero, and here we had multiple digits that were not zero, and here we had multiple digits that were not zero. That's how you know you are gonna have to do another round. After I split these up, notice in 1,000, there's only one number that's not zero. In 100, there's only one number that's not zero. Or sorry, let me, uh, of course, because we split it up. I meant to look at this line. So here, the 1,000, there's only one number that's not zero. The 200, there's only one digit that's not zero. In the 40, there's only one digit that's not zero. And then two is just one digit. So on this line, I knew I wasn't done because at least one of these numbers had multiple digits that weren't zero. On this one, I knew that I was almost at the end because each one only has one digit that isn't zero. All right, so let's work uh, through one more example. Let's, uh, let's do a fun one and throw in some decimals, shall we? All right, here we go. So I have 28 and 65 hundredths, and I'm adding to that 39 and 75 hundredths. Now, if you're feeling daring and you want to pause the video here and see if you can figure it out, by all means, feel free to do that. If you're like, I need one more example where we work through it, especially because there's these decimals, then um, I'm gonna work through it here. But if you want to um, pause and try it out on your own, see if you get it right, you can do that, of course. All right, so I'm gonna do this one uh, the numbers way first, and then we'll do the pictures way. So for the numbers way, I'm going to take 28.65 and split that up into 20 plus 8 
plus six tenths plus five hundredths, right? So we have, here's our 20, eight, six, and five. And remember that I have to put this extra zero here in front of the five, since this five has an extra number in between it and the decimal point. So this zero is a placeholder. In the same way that when I write 20, okay, this zero is a placeholder for this place value between the two and the decimal point. Then I'm gonna write out this second number. So we have um, 30, nine, uh, 0.7, and then we have a five here, so that's going to be 0.05. Okay. Again, because there's one space between the five and the decimal point, so we have to have a placeholder zero there. All right, so next we're just going to add together those like types of numbers. So we'll add the tens first. So we've got 20 and 30, so two, three, four, five. So that will give me 50. Then I have um, eight, nine. Okay, so nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Then 0. 0.6 and 0. 0.7. So six and seven is gonna give me 13. So if I add six and seven, I get 13. Now, because of this decimal point, I wanna make sure I put things in the correct spot. So when I get that 13, it's going to correspond to 1.3. So the three of the 13 stays in the same place where the six and the seven were and then the one goes in the next spot over. This is just like when we added eight and nine together, the seven stayed in the ones place where the eight and the nine were, and then the 10 of the 17 was in the next spot over, right, to the left. So when we add these two tenths together, the six and the seven, the three stays here, and the one of the 13 moves over into the ones place. And lastly, let's do our hundredths. So five and five makes 10. So that means when I'm thinking of that answer of 10, since the fives were in the hundredths place, the zero of the 10 gets in the hundredths, and then the one of the 10 is gonna go into the tenths. And then we have just that zero stays. Yeah, so the one thing to be careful about uh, with the decimals are one thing to be, not the only one thing, but one of the things to be careful about is making sure when you get a two-digit answer when you're adding the decimals to make sure that decimal point is staying in the correct spot. Now that we have here, this one's okay because we only have one digit that's not a zero. And this one's actually okay because we also only have one digit that's not a zero. But these two numbers are problems because these two numbers have two digits that are not zero. So we're gonna to have to split these two up. So I can bring 50 down. 17, I can split up into 10 plus seven. And 1.3, I can split up into one plus three tenths. And then I'll bring down my point 10. Now, the other thing I wanna mention is we have to make sure we're also using some of the things we've already learned about decimal numbers to write them more simply. For example, with point 10, this 10 on the end is not necessary. So kind of a side note here is that 0 0.10 is the same as 0 0.1. So this is one of the reasons why understanding our objects before we start to interact them is important because we wanna rewrite this 0 0.10 as a 0 0.1. That's gonna help us make sure that we're adding the correct things together. Now I can go ahead and combine the things that are like. So for instance, I have five tens and one 10, which is gonna give me six tens, seven and one, which is gonna give me an eight, and then three tenths plus one tenth is gonna give me four tenths. Now, when I look at each of these numbers, 
there's only one non-zero digit, only one non-zero digit, only one non-zero digit. So now we can add them up. So we end up with 68.4. So 28.65 plus 39.75 is gonna give us 68.4. Now, just to kind of confirm this or to look at an alternate way, I'm gonna redo the same problem, but using the shapes. This time I'm gonna um, pause while I work through that. Um, and so you'll see my final answer magically written just about now. All right, so here is my solu solution uh, through the pictures. So I'm gonna walk through what I did. I represented 28.65 using blue and 39.75 using red, just to keep those numbers a little bit easier for me to keep track of. So I once again used my circles for my tens place in each number. I used a dot to represent the ones, a triangle for the tenths, and a square, filled in square for the hundredths. So when I wrote out 28.65, I had two blue circles, eight dots, six triangles, and five filled in squares. And when I wrote out 39.75, I had three circles, nine red dots, seven triangles, and five filled in squares. So that was how I drew those two numbers out. And then starting from the shape that represents the smallest place value, so in this case, the hundredths, I saw if I found groups of 10 and converted them to the next larger shape when I could. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 squares. So those 10 squares get X'd out and replaced with a triangle. Remember, this is like having 10 filled in square shaped dimes and replacing them with a triangle dollar bill. Then I counted up to see if we had 10 triangles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 triangles. So those groups together gave me an extra dot. And then I had one, two, three, four triangles left. So no more 10 triangles. Then for the circles I had, or for the dots, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 dots. So that turned into a circle. And then I thought I might have another circle here because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dots. So I almost had another 10 dots. So you do want to check if I had another group of 10 dots, it would have become another circle. And then for my circles, I had one, two, three, four, five, six circles. So I was done with this chain reaction of converting currency. So in the end, I wound up with six circles, eight dots, four triangles, and there weren't any of the filled in squares left. So uh, if there's nothing left, you can write a zero there, but also because this is a decimal number, that zero is not necessary. So 68.40 is gonna be the same thing as 68.4, which is what we got when we use the numerical approach. So that's the process of um, like this addition process as I'm calling it, where you're basically kind of grouping like place values together um, and then uh, or drawing pictures and grouping those similar pictures together. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about um, why this process is useful once you start using letters in math. We're not using letters right now, but I do wanna show you a place where it's used um, so you have an idea of where you're headed on your math journey. So we'll see a place where this process is similar in algebra. And then um, after that, we're gonna go through the traditional addition algorithm with carrying. And that's the one that I learned when I was in school. And it might be one that you learned when you were in school uh, in the past. And if you like that method, you can use that one. But we'll talk about that one and see how it relates to this process that we've been doing here. So I hope you found this video helpful with the carrying process of um, our addition process. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. So bye for now, everybody. Thank you.